You're here because you're probably an empath or a highly sensitive person, and you want to learn how to set better boundaries in your life. I'm guessing you probably have empathy in spades, and it's starting to cause some problems for you. Maybe it's taking a toll on your mental, emotional, or physical health, or it's just preventing you from being the person you want to be and achieving your highest potential. Without healthy boundaries, you can feel exhausted, depleted, lost, and even resentful. So in this video, I'm gonna cover everything related to setting boundaries as an empath or highly sensitive person. It's gonna be pretty jam-packed. I'll briefly go into what being an empath is all about, why boundaries are so important for us, some signs of boundary issues. I'm gonna give you some techniques for managing them. And at the end, I'm gonna share a method that I created that I use every day to stay centered and keep my boundaries in check. It's totally helped me do a complete 180 from feeling depleted and scattered to anchored and secure. All of this comes from years of real life experience as an empath, going through therapy, counseling, research, and what I've seen working with clients as a coach. I put some timestamps in the description below so you can jump around between the different sections if you want to. Okay, so what is an empath. An empath is someone who is deeply affected by the emotions and energy of other people. If you're an empath, you have a high level of empathy, which allows you to connect with people in deep and profound ways. But sometimes it's not so fun and you might feel like you can't turn it off. When you walk into a crowded room of people, you might be like a sponge taking on all of the thoughts and emotions from those around you. You may have a hard time discerning where you end and others begin. And this breach of identity can show up with you carrying the weight of the world in your body. Sometimes this might manifest in physical or emotional symptoms that gradually build and build when you're around others. It might show up as physical tension or anxiety. And you might not even be aware of it until you get a moment to yourself. So why am I qualified to talk about all of this? Well, I am an empath <laughs> and I struggled for years starting in childhood, feeling very confused and misunderstood about how deeply I felt emotions and the world around me. It caused me so much turmoil and anxiety because of the way I couldn't turn off my high sensitivity. Everywhere I went, it was like I had these tentacles reaching out and taking the temperature of every single person around me. It felt like a curse, and I didn't understand how other people seemed to be able to navigate life so easily when, like, going to class, for example, felt like navigating a storm of emotional and psychic energy. When I finally learned in my 20s that being an empath or a highly sensitive person was actually a thing, <laughs> I was able to start unwinding all of the shame I had taken on about being so sensitive and I learned to start embracing the gifts of sensitivity and how to manage the challenges of being an empath. A big part of that came through understanding and developing boundaries, which is what I'm gonna be talking about today. To be honest, when I first learned about boundaries, I was like, oh, I can do that? Like, I get to do that. Empaths are the way they are, typically from a combination of temperament, genetics, trauma, and parenting. Some empaths are raised in family environments where their need for connection and safety isn't fully met, maybe because of an alcoholic, depressed, narcissistic, or otherwise emotionally absent, abusive, or inconsistent parenting. This trauma can cause the child, who probably is already highly sensitive, to become hypervigilant, constantly sensing the emotional needs of the parent and responding to them accordingly in order to feel safe. This pattern becomes ingrained and without revealing and healing the underlying trauma can carry on into adulthood. The empath essentially gets stuck in a state of high empathy out of survival, even when they can easily care for themselves as an adult on a practical level. They're still playing out the same pattern they know from childhood. This trauma keeps this aspect of themselves stuck in a childlike state for years to come. And this is one of the reasons why boundaries are so important for empaths, because they create a safe container that facilitates healing. For empaths, that is crucial. All right, so boundaries. A boundary is a line that separates this thing from that thing. In the case of personal boundaries, is what separates self from others. Ultimately, boundaries allow us to take full ownership of our lives and authority as human beings. 
we get to decide what we do or do not want in our world. So boundaries can be physical, like do not touch me, emotional or psychological, don't lie to me, don't shame me, verbal, I don't want to be spoken to that way, and even energetic or spiritual. They can also involve time and space, like needing physical distance from someone for a period of time. Boundaries can also exist within ourselves, like needing to have parameters around money, social media, or our work, for example. So on the spectrum of boundaries, there are two extremes. Rigid boundaries, meaning a hard separation between self and other. There's nothing going in or out. And then porous boundaries, which means there's little to no separation between self and other. Everything is coming and going into one's life with little control. And this is where empaths usually fall on the spectrum until they go through the healing journey and learn to master boundaries. An ideal boundary is one that is flexible so that you get to decide how you want to use them on a moment to moment basis. Sometimes that might mean more open boundaries so you can enjoy being in the wave of life, receive connection with others and let love and affection both in and out. And other times that might mean closing your boundaries so you can protect your time, space, and energy to heal, to decide what you want for your life, um, enjoy your separateness, and have the focus to go after your goals. If you're an empath, the idea of boundaries might be completely foreign to you. Like I mentioned before, you might be like, what, I get to set boundaries? I can decide what I want for my own life? So many of us empaths have been conditioned to believe that we are responsible for the emotional needs of those around us, and we get stuck having boundaries that are way too porous. If we imagine that our ability to set boundaries is like a dial on the control panel of our life, for empaths, it's like that dial can get stuck in the open position so that we're unable to dial it back. For those of us who are particularly sensitive, this can mean that when you go out into the world, you're just picking up on everything around you 24 seven. Thoughts, emotions, sensations of other people. You're constantly monitoring subtle body language and facial expressions, and you're just hyper vigilant to those around you. Here's some other signs of poor boundaries. Overextending yourself, saying yes to requests or obligations, even when it compromises your personal well being or energy reserves. Neglecting personal needs, prioritizing the needs of others over your own, leading to a neglect of self care. Overfixing others' problems. Like, do you feel responsible for solving or rescuing others from their problems, even when it's not even within your role or capacity? Putting up with disrespectful behavior. Allowing others to disrespect or mistreat you without asserting boundaries or advocating for yourself. Avoiding conflict. Avoiding confrontation or difficult conversations, even when it's necessary to set boundaries or express needs. Overgiving in relationships. Giving more than receiving, leading to feelings of depletion or resentment. Neglecting emotional boundaries. Allowing others to invade your personal space or share intimate details without consent and ignoring physical limits, pushing yourself beyond your physical limits or tolerating discomfort to accommodate others, leading to exhaustion or burnout. All of this, as I'm sure you know, can take a huge toll on our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. And I have totally been there. I honestly don't even know where to start if I give you examples because if I went into them right now, I feel like this video would never end. But suffice it to say, I've spent so much of my life over giving, over extending, and I know how exhausting it is. That's why I want to help you too. There are a couple reasons why having porous boundaries is so common for empaths. First up, childhood trauma. Like I mentioned before, experiencing trauma or not having your needs met for security and validation as a child can create an anxious or insecure attachment where you are con continuously looking for safety from those around you. It's like the little kid version of you is still stuck in the past, feeling abandoned and looking to be rescued. As an adult, until you realize that you, you are here to save you, as an empath, you are just like a sponge, constantly soaking up the emotions of others with the belief that maybe eventually it will pay off and you will get the security that you desperately need. And sometimes, we get a glimpse that this strategy works, which makes it a vicious cycle. Many of us empaths get into relationships, whether that's romantic, friendships, 
um, business or otherwise with people that are narcissistic or are at least oriented on the other side of that boundary spectrum where they are cut off from their true self in a different way, where their trauma causes them to separate. Being around someone like an empath makes them feel alive, calm, seen, and powerful, at least for a temporary period of time. And this matching makes you, the empath, feel secure temporarily. Like you're playing a role that no one else could ever play for this person. And in turn, you'll be safe as long as you keep playing this role. And truthfully, we live in a world where this paradigm of narcissism, of lacking empathy, of domination and control, or what one of my mentors calls empire consciousness, where it's so prevalent that you may think your only way to survive is to continue playing a role managing the emotions and needs of others. Being a highly sensitive person born into an insensitive world in and of itself is traumatic. The prevailing culture has constantly reinforced to you that your sensitivity is a weakness. This can cause you to not trust yourself and to not claim your own inherent worth and power. And when you do try to claim it, when you try to set boundaries, when you try to say no, you might be met with shame, with judgment. You might be told that you are being selfish for trying to set boundaries, and you might believe it. What you need to know, though, is that people who shame others for setting boundaries are oftentimes unwilling to look at their own wounds and instead make it everyone else's problem. Okay, rant over. But all of this aside, setting boundaries for empaths is also difficult because at the end of the day, we care deeply. We feel deeply. We are highly sensitive people that have high empathy and genuinely want the best for those around us. We feel a hurting world and we want to be a part of the solution. Here's the secret though. You, your authentic self, your beautiful, sensitive self is part of the solution. When you learn to claim your boundaries and you know your inherent worth, you set the bar. You set the pace for what a healthier world can look like. You become an example of what genuine healing looks like. You take ownership and responsibility for your inner world and you encourage others to do the same. You give back to others that which is not yours to carry and you become a beacon of light in a hurting world. Before I continue, I just wanna take a moment to thank you for watching this video and for supporting my channel. I wanna encourage you to hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications to get more videos like this in the future. All right, so at the end of the day, when you feel safe and secure in your own skin, when you validate your sensitivity and everything that makes you you, you'll be able to more easily take full ownership of your life and start setting boundaries like a pro. Just keep in mind that all of this is a process. It's not a one and done solution. Although practicing intentional boundary setting on a regular basis will make the process feel much more automatic. At every new stage of life, you'll get new opportunities to adjust your boundaries in a way that feels true for you. So let's get into some techniques for setting boundaries. First off, developing somatic awareness or intuition is absolutely key. Your body is the best guide as to how your boundary setting is going. As a highly sensitive person, your body is going to give you very clear signals when your boundaries are compromised or need to be readjusted. I actually have a free course called Unlocking the Wisdom of the Felt Sense that can help you to learn how to listen more closely to what your body is telling you. If you click up here, you can watch the intro to that course, and I'll also throw a link in the description below. Secondly, an easy cue to look for is the emotion of resentment. This typically shows up a little later after you might have ignored some more subtle cues in the body, but resentment is gonna tell you that you've most likely bypassed setting a boundary a few miles back and it's a good sign to do some discovery on how to reset and reclaim your life again. Next, get in the habit of expressing your needs and limits clearly. Notice if you start compromising on sharing what you need in relationships out of fear of abandonment or disappointing others. And when you do have an opportunity to set a limit or say no, just notice that it's going to probably feel uncomfortable and that's sometimes good. <laughs> because you're breaking a pattern. And you also don't have to rush to give someone an answer. 
If you have a history of being a people pleaser, maybe try experimenting with setting your default answer to new requests to no, or maybe, or I'll get back to you. And then check in with yourself to see what's really true for you. Your inner child might be really afraid of losing an attachment to other people or a group, and it doesn't mean that something is wrong by setting a boundary. Use this space as an opportunity to explore the deeper wound behind the fear of saying no. When these deeper fears or shame surface, when patterns arise and you feel stuck, enlist the help of a qualified therapist or a coach that can safely help you to process past experiences and help you understand how they are impacting your present life. Some other things that you can do on your own, first, practicing self-care, like making space for alone time. This can help you get back to your baseline and allow your nervous system to reset so you can more clearly see your relationships and obligations from a more objective vantage point. Also, establishing daily routines and structures can also help a lot to set the tone for boundary setting in all aspects of your life. When you prioritize your needs and desires by creating systems or habits around them, you'll be less likely to habitually take on that which doesn't serve you. Journaling is also a great tip. If you haven't already, starting a regular journaling practice, either on paper or digitally, can help a lot. Whether you do free flow writing or typing, a lot of times you'll get clear guidance on how to adjust your boundaries from there. Also, a daily meditation practice can help immensely. This could be something as simple as doing like a body scan mindfulness practice where you just check for sensations head to toe when you're just present with them, or doing a guided meditation. One meditation that was taught to me by my teacher C years ago that's perfect for empaths involves commanding your consciousness back into your body. If you can, just imagine a cord three centimeters in diameter running along your spine and back body, connecting you into the earth and up into the cosmos. As you disconnect your energy from everything in the world that is depleting you, pull it back into this condensed area and allow yourself to feel anchored into the earth and safely held by your higher presence. Speaking of higher presence, this is the tool that I've been waiting to share with you. It's called the Inner Orchestra Model, and it's amazing for helping to set and maintain boundaries and can help empaths a lot. It's a model that's somewhat based on internal family systems, if you're familiar with that and it helps you to take inventory of your internal world. If you imagine your inner world as an orchestra hall, your highest self is like the conductor on the conductor podium in a relationship with all the different parts and players in the orchestra, which are all the parts that make up you. Now, this conductor is also responsible for setting and maintaining the boundaries of the orchestra hall, protecting the orchestra and deciding who or what can come in or out. This can be a super helpful model for checking in on your boundaries because if the conductor starts to fall off the podium, you'll feel this in your body as a sort of imbalance or tension. And you'll notice if it's a result of boundaries that need to be checked or members of the inner orchestra like your inner child that needs attention. I wanna invite you to explore this concept further and see if it helps you as much as it's helped me and others I go into this inner orchestra model in more detail in other videos, and I also have a free inner orchestra guide that you can download and read through on your own. The link to that is in the description below. Now, setting boundaries can be difficult, it can be uncomfortable, and it can force you to confront relationships or patterns where you might be pulling more than your fair share or giving more than is true for you. And for empaths, it's absolutely essential to master boundaries so that you can reclaim your power and own your sensitivity as a gift for good. With healthy boundaries, you'll be able to bring your unique talents and gifts to the world with less resistance. You deserve to be happy, you deserve to have peace, and you deserve to be able to thrive. I wanna remind you again that when you set boundaries in a healthy and loving way, Although it might rock the boat or cause some people discomfort, ultimately, it's what being a true healer is all about. Stepping into your power, into your light, shows others what is possible. Surround yourself with friends and kindred souls who understand and support you in setting healthy boundaries and embracing your authentic self. Find your community and reach out for professional help when needed.
I hope you enjoyed this video on setting boundaries for empaths and highly sensitive people. Leave a comment below and share some of your tips for setting boundaries. Maybe you have some that I've never even thought of. And since you made it to the end of the video, because it's getting close to St. Patrick's Day, which is also my birthday, leave a little shamrock emoji in your comment just for fun. And if you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell for more content like this in the future. Thank you for watching, friend, and namaste.